a hundred years after 99% of the world's male population was wiped out due to nuclear and biological warfare, the peaceful and flourishing Earth is now dominated by women who've created secure utopian communities. When a school field trip visits the encampment of the few remaining men, a chance encounter ignites a spark between a man and a woman from opposite ends of society. In 2140 Russia, a young woman wakes up to the sound of her AI's voice encouraging her to get ready for her work. The youthful teacher celebrating her 50th birthday, Rada, lives in the technologically advanced matriarchal eco-town mainly populated by women, called Two Hills. Their society heavily depends on technology that checks their health and makes food and clothing on demand. As Rada eats her breakfast, she watches a commercial for the latest state-of-the-art pleasure device before switching to the news reporting about a famous artist and activist fighting for equal rights for men and women to procreate through natural means. As she turns the television off, Rada merely scoffs at the artist's actions. With her new clothes ready, Rada makes her way through the eco-town with a bag of trash in hand. As she passes through the park, she runs into her friend Ia and they talk about their excitement for the new pleasure product. She suddenly receives a call on her ring communication device from her mother, Yelena, which she tries to drop. However, Yelena jogs up from behind to remind her that the daughter of the mother of the two hills will be part of the class field trip under Rada later today. If she makes a good impression, she might get an internship at the city hall. Rada is disinterested in the opportunity and annoyed by her mother's insistence. Before speeding off to continue her jog, Yelena reminds Rada to take a whistle with her on the field trip because Moscow is full of primates. After her mother leaves, Rada throws her trash in one compartment and Ia tells her she should have segregated her waste. Rada says she can't because she's late for work. A policewoman on a bicycle sees this and deducts social points from Rada for breaking the rules, then rewards Ia points for reminding her friend. These points are currency in their society and also determines their place in the social hierarchy. She immediately hails a ride that takes her to a shuttle where she'll be conducting her class. As Rada enters the vehicle, she apologizes to the students for being late and starts her lecture with a short video. The video explains how men used to rule the world and oppressed women through greed and war. Along with increasing global warming and war, the earth and society as a whole was on the brink of collapse. In the year 2030, a conflict between the United States and North Korea escalates to the latter creating a virus that they sent to the US to annihilate all the men. However, the virus mutated and spread worldwide, eradicating 99% of the male human species. The disease brought terror, sorrow, and loss to mankind when science failed to find an immediate cure. As years passed, women stepped up and started ruling the world. They solved all the problems the men had started. So global warming lessened, pollution decreased, and the preservation of animal and plant life persists. Because almost all diseases have been eradicated, life expectancy has since jumped to 150 years, explaining the women's youthful appearances despite their ages. While there is a decreasing number of male births, most have decided to move to the outskirts of eco-towns, where they remain in their primitive ways of life, lacking high-quality food, education, or technology. Beyond the eco-town barrier, the men are loitering around the slums with a few rough-looking women that had joined their colony. Meanwhile, Gira bargains for a crucial computer part, but the man doesn't give in. To fool the seller, he brings out a fidget spinner and acts as though he's contemplating the man's asking price. Intrigued by the toy, the seller foolishly trades for the spinning device with the computer cable, and even throws in a poster featuring a beautiful woman. Hiding a smirk, Gira accepts the items and walks through the slums. Around him are people making do with what they can scavenge, and watching street fights as a means of entertainment. Gira gets home and immediately uses the cable to fix his grandfather's old computer. When it finally turns on, Gira calls his grandfather, and tears of joy well up in the older man's eyes. His grandfather points out the games he had played before, and reveals that Gira was named after his favorite character from Witcher, Geralt. Later, they watch an old romantic movie, and Gira asks his grandfather what love is. The older man says it's the greatest thing one would trade their life to have. Suddenly, they hear a man calling Gira's name, and immediately shut off the monitor. The man, Kirisa, enters the room and excitedly asks if Gira's fixed the device, and if it contains anything he can use for pleasure. However, Gira and his grandfather pretend that the device is still broken. Dismayed, Kirisa tells Gira to head to the gathering because he's needed. Meanwhile, the class stops by 
by an elevated area overlooking Moscow, where the students take pictures of the abandoned city. In curiosity, Mila asks their teacher why the buildings are so tall and massive. With a smirk on her face, Rada tells them that men built giant infrastructures to feed their egos and compensate for their physical shortcomings, making the girls scoff at the male's idiocy. In the encampment, the men prepare a feast for an important person's arrival. When their entourage finally arrives, the host readies the microphone, piano, and speakers. Carissa signals the host to play the music, as everyone gathers in a line to welcome the guest. The Baron exits the vehicle and closes his eyes for a few minutes, enjoying the music. After a while, he asks the host to stop the song, and steps on the stage. The Baron greets the men and the few women of the commune before starting his speech about the poor treatment of men by women, and how his grandfather was the first man to escape the women-governed society to start a community where men can be free to do whatever they want. He wishes to succeed in his planned rebellion against the government, and greets the locals with a happy Independence Day. The men cheer and applaud, expressing their support. After the speech, he orders his men to shower the townspeople with candies they were able to scavenge from a confectionery factory. While the others are busy picking up the candy from the ground, the Baron calls for Gira, who unwillingly approaches him. He orders the lad to capture a goose and make a pecking duck for him to feast on, before bragging about his crocodile skin shoes to the others. Meanwhile, Rada takes her students outside the perimeters of the encampment to show them the extreme difference between their world and the primates. As they are about to leave, the girls demand to see the primitive men, but the teacher denies their request and tells them that it's too dangerous. However, Mila and the others insist, pressuring Rada to guide them inside. As they happen upon the locals enjoying their feast, the students are equally fascinated and disgusted by the men's state of life. However, their gawking does not sit well with the residents. One man stands up and rudely pulls down his pants, showing them his private parts. But the girls don't see his action as rude. Thinking this is merely a simple greeting, one of Rada's students imitates the man by lifting up her skirt and flashing her underwear, making the other males stand up aggressively. Fearing what might happen, Rada ushers her students back to the shuttle. While counting the number of students inside the shuttle, Rada realizes Mila is missing. Returning inside the encampment, Rada sees Mila staring at a goose with fascination. Gira suddenly appears and decapitates the poor animal with a machete, horrifying the women. When he hears someone else approaching, Gira calls them into hiding. As they hide behind a wall, Gira can't help but stare at the beautiful woman beside him. After the passing man leaves, Rada thanks Gira for saving their lives, but the lad is completely mesmerized by the teacher's beauty and kisses her. Taken by surprise, Rada blows her whistle in panic, alerting the other men to find and capture them. After presenting the captives to the Baron, he organizes a slapping competition, in which the winner gets to procreate with the women. Fearing for their safety, Gira volunteers, and the Baron chooses his imposing bodyguard, Giant, as his opponent. The Baron grants Gira the first hit. He winds his arm back and slaps the bald man with all his might, but Giant is unfazed. When it's Giant's turn, he swings his arm toward Gira's face, but he expertly evades the slap, and Giant hits the Baron instead, knocking the leader to the ground. While everyone else is concerned for the Baron's well-being and rushes towards the fallen man, Gira tells the women to quickly escape to their shuttle. Gira realizes he's incurred a grave violation by what he did, so he runs home and tells his grandfather to hide him. Moments later, Kirisa arrives with other men asking about Gira's whereabouts. The old man points out that his grandson escaped through the window, so one man jumps from it and crashes at the bottom. Then, the old man reminds them that the moonshine supplies are ready, making Carissa stop his search for Gira. Later, Carissa and another man haul the cargo and wait for a shuttle to drive by to pick up the moonshine. When the shuttle slows down, Julius questions the AI, Larissa, why they're stopping in the middle of the forest. Larissa addresses him as the keeper of the seeds and tells him that they are to take a fresh delivery of batteries. As Julius opens the shuttle, Carissa introduces themselves as the technical service crew and places the cargo into the vehicle. As the shuttle moves, the drum shakes, and Gira pops out of the container, surprising Julius. Gira explains that he was checking the battery's health and asks if he could exit the shuttle. But when the door opens, the vehicle is moving too fast for him to jump off safely. Julius explains the shuttle can't stop because it's on autopilot, but promises Gira can deboard when the shuttle slows down as they near the destination. Intrigued by the 
beverage Gira drinks from a flask, Julius asks him what it is. Gira tells him it's moonshine and offers some to the curious man. Surprised by the liquor's strong taste, Julius coughs and his face contorts in a grimace calling the alcohol an abomination. In Rada's home, Yelena confronts her daughter for the irresponsible actions that might have jeopardized her standing in society. A colorfully dressed older woman arrives, interrupting their argument, and quickly comes to Rada's defense. The older woman was the artist and activist Rada saw protesting on the news that morning, who also happens to be Yelena's mother and Rada's grandmother, Zoya. Yelena tells Zoya that Rada could have been abducted or taken advantage of by the men if they hadn't escaped the encampment. She also blames Zoya's influence on Rada, before handing her daughter a birthday gift and leaving. As Rada excitedly opens it, she sees the newest pleasure device everyone's been talking about. Seconds later, Zoya asks about the primate Rada encountered. Rada tells her grandma that she was surprised he protected them and didn't show any aggression at all. Zoya tells her that during her time, real men were like that. She shows Rada a picture of a man she once loved and described him as good looking. However, Rada tells her that the man from the encampment was more handsome. In the shuttle, Gira and Julius are having a good time talking and drinking booze, with the keeper of the seeds getting increasingly intoxicated. Julius says his duty to mankind is providing the women with his seed, and in exchange, he's pampered and well taken care of. Julius says only 10 men are assigned to each eco-town, to Gira's amazement. Julius gulps down the liquor and Gira tells him to sit and rest, which the man disregards. Intoxicated, Julius destroys his ring communication device and commands Larissa to open the shuttle door. Julius accidentally falls out of the vehicle when a branch hits him on the head. Gira can only watch in panic as he realizes he's been left alone in the shuttle. As the vehicle arrives by the eco-town border, Gira exits the shuttle, and the female guard on duty welcomes him. She notices his missing ring, so he lies that he broke his communication device. Fortunately, the lady kindly tells him they'll simply report that he lost the ring, and have it replaced by the authorities. A beautiful lady arrives on a bike with a chariot attachment. Gira gets on the chariot and the woman takes him into town. Meanwhile in the park, Rada and Ia are talking about Zoya's strange beliefs of wanting men to return to society. Rada asks why it bothers her friend, and Ia says it's because she thinks Zoya's actions are weird. Suddenly, Gira's transport passes by the park, but Rada doesn't turn to look, missing the opportunity to see him. As Gira rides through the eco-town, the women clap and happily greet the new keeper of the seeds. They finally arrive in the city hall, and Vera, the mother of the two hills, greets Gira. They offer him an apple as a welcoming gesture to their community, which the lad and Vera each take one bite of. As the clock chimes 7 o'clock, everyone pairs off and shares hugs. Gira, who's now pretending to be Julius, gets to hug Yelena. While embracing her secretary, Vera asks if the moonshine has been received, which the secretary affirms. Gira is then taken on a tour of his new home, and he is in awe of the amenities the other seed keepers are currently enjoying. Eager to get started with his job, believing he'll be sleeping with women to propagate his seed, Yelena guides him to another room. Before he enters, Gira asks Yelena if she'll be joining him inside. The woman notices his inexperience and assures him someone else will be catering to him inside. As Gira enters the room, a middle-aged woman, Luba, greets him, much to his dismay. She gestures for him to sit on a reclining chair. While she brings in an extraction machine, Luba attaches the suction hose onto Gira's member, and he realizes this is their method of collecting his seed. Although initially uncomfortable, Gira relaxes and imagines Rada during the process. Meanwhile, in her home, Rada takes the pleasure device to bed with her and imagines Gira the same way. Back at the slums, the real Julius groggily stumbles into the men's territory, asking for water, before passing out from exhaustion. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.